Hello and welcome to Perk Up with the President. I'm Dr. Spearman, the president of Rock Valley College, and this is where we get to talk about student success. When we think of Perk, it's really about persistence, enrollment, retention, completion. And when you add those up, you get student success. And today, we're going to talk to one of our trustees, Crystal Soltop, who is our newest trustee on the board. And so we're going to hear about student success from the lens of our trustee. Crystal, thank you for coming today. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. You are so welcome. Uh, if, as we start, can you please just simply introduce yourself to, uh, uh, just look, look towards the camera, introduce yourself, and let them know a little bit about why you decided to be a trustee and what is it that you do in the community? My name is Crystal Salto. I am a mother of four. I'm a business owner of seven years. Um, I also um, have owned a gym um, that I didn't see in my future at first. Um, it kind of just fell in my lap. Um, but with the resources, um, working in the community, I found myself working with uh, the mayor of my town, a lot of the local businesses, um, and an opportunity approached me where they asked if I would be interested. Um, and so I did a little research of my own, um, talked to a team of mine that I go to, and that's how I came here. <laughs> so I do want to talk to you about the gym. Yes. <laughs> because <laughs> as you just said that, you know, <clears throat> When we talk about, when we think about success, uh, there's uh, success or let's think not only about success, but health. Yeah. There's mental health. Sure. There's physical health. There's spiritual health. Mm -hmm. There's all these different components of health that could equate to success of any individual. Absolutely. So how do you work some of those components into your gym? Ooh, I am a person of motivation, uplifting. Um, when you go to a gym, you go in there, you work out, and you do what you have to do right. In my place of business, I have a connection with you. Everybody has a different story. My health story doesn't look the same as yours, obviously. Um, when I first came to the gym, it was about body image for me. When I started working out, the person who, I became, who became a mentor to me really taught me that it doesn't have to be what I look like on the outside. It was really what I felt on the inside. Once I started to do, this is funny, a push-up. I couldn't do a push-up for the life of me, <laughs> right? And so when I, when I came into my, my gym, it was really hard for me and it broke me a little bit. But he kept telling me, every time you come in here, do one push-up after your workout, when your body is completely done. I said, okay. So about six weeks later, I got up to seven push-ups, And I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> what? And so now it's to the point where I can do them and it makes me feel so good internally, spiritually, mentally, I feel stronger. And now it's like the body image part of it doesn't even exist in me anymore. So when people see that, I relate to their journey. Whether you are bigger than me, skinnier than me, taller than me, shorter than me, I try to relate to that in some kind of way for them. Um, so it's just one of those things where if they're not in the gym, I'm knocking at their door, I'm emailing them, I'm calling them. They've gotten so good to the point where they're like, Crystal, I'm gonna be on vacation next week. So <laughs> just in case. And so when they're on vacation, I send them with a deck of cards and a little rubric and I'm like, in the mornings, you flip these cards and that's what you're gonna do for your workout, you know, and they're like, oh. And they send me videos, um, they'll text message me. It's just one of those things where, okay, somebody has my back. And I feel like that's super important, you know, when you go in there, somebody that's, that's cheering for you, you mm -hmm. know? Um, but that's, that's how it works. <laughs> well, I, I loved hearing that and I'm glad I asked you that question, all right, because uh, you're a personal trainer, you're a mm -hmm. coach, mm -hmm. uh, you're, like you said, you're a motivator, mm -hmm. and those are all characteristics <clears throat> that we also need on campus. Absolutely. Uh, Sometimes it's trying to convince students that, you know, just trust the process. Mm -hmm. 
start. Yes. You know, walk on campus, get a tour, just complete the application. Mm -hmm. But once you start that process, I believe that we have so many people here to help motivate them to just do that one push-up, mm -hmm. you know, so that they can get here. Mm -hmm. And maybe in six weeks, they're actually, instead of taking one credit, they've actually decided to enroll in three credits or six credits, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, that is, um, I, I, this is the beginning of our conversation, and that sums up student success. <laughs> You're throwing me for a loop here. <laughs> 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 but I love it. So, um, but talk to me a little bit about, um, you know, you, uh, have you had any uh, college experience? I, I, I went to a trade school mm -hmm. after high school. Um, <clears throat> I felt like at that point in my life, I wasn't ready to take on the college experience, mm -hmm. um, just where I was at in life. And so I did go to a uh, trade school in Chicago um, for nursing. And I, I loved helping people, but I knew that there was more to it for me. Um, so what I did is I sat down with my family and I said, hey, look, this is how I feel. Um, this is where I'm at. So I came home and started working for Dick's Sporting Goods. Mm -hmm. And about a year and a half into that, I, I was 19. And the uh, general manager comes up to me and he says, hey, I see something in you how do you feel about moving to a different state? And I kind of looked at him and I was like, what? He goes, I love the, and I worked in the shoe department. <laughs> he was like, I, I watched you help this man who was running and he came and he told you, and you know who it was? It was Dr. Gorski of Swedish American Hospital. Ah. And I never met him before. I didn't even know who he was. And he said to me, do you know who that was? And I said, no. He goes, that man just complimented you because nobody has ever taken care of him the way you took care of him. And I said, oh, and he goes, I want you to go to Wisconsin and open up the Madison East Side store and the West Side store. And I was like, I am 19 years old. I am <laughs> not going to do that. Um, but that's where I was like, OK, maybe this is something that I, I could per, you know, pursue. And um, literally within three months, I was up there living in, in a hotel across the street. Um, it, it taught me a lot. It taught me that I needed to learn to have resources. It taught me that I needed to not lean on my own understanding, but that I needed to ask for help when I needed it, talk to people, because I was alone up there. Mm -hmm. um, it was just at the time my boyfriend, um, he was like, he followed me up there. Now he's my husband. Um, <laughs> but it was very challenging for me. Um, but to have those resources is what really helped me become successful. And I look at those times now and think, wow, that's why I went through that. Um, and that's why where I'm at right now. Uh, I still have those those times where I look and like, wow, when I was at Dick's Sporting Goods, this is what happened to me. And people still recognize me. Like if they go out, they're like, did you work at Dick's Sporting Goods one time? <laughs> um, I went to Chase Bank and he's like, did you work at Dick's Sporting Goods? And I said, yes. He goes, I would never forget that smile. And th that made me feel really good because I was like, wow, you remembered. I sold you a pair of shoes that you probably don't even have anymore, <laughs> you know? Um, but it was, it was, very humbling experience, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't regret it for anything. And again, thank you for sharing that story. Uh, what I'm pulling from that is uh, by stepping out there, by starting your journey, by uh, trusting the process, right? Sometimes people think when you trust the process, that means that student success or success, individual success, is defined by a certain way. Sure. Uh, that is defined only by uh, completion of the degree or completion of the certificate. Uh, but student success can also be defined by the fact that there was a level of self-discovery. Mm. And when you went into that trade school and you decided it was not for me, mm -hmm. but you went back home to discuss with your family, mm -hmm. that's still discovery. You're And now you're uh, sharing that as a form of communication but you were talented and there was a level of skill that other people recognize and that you were able to capitalize on sure and I so, think for 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 a lot of things when I see and I talk to um, college kids high school kids I think the world has somewhat put a damper on those things when it comes to they only see the beginning and the end of it 
you know, um, they nobody ever really sees the middle part of it. Like, how did that person get from here to here? That middle journey is hardly and rarely ever shown. You know, that testimony, and that's what counts, I feel like. You know, um, I don't know if you've heard of Spartan races. They're an obstacle course race. Mm -hmm. I've done very a lot of them. <laughs> and I, in the beginning, I said, I'm only going to do this one. It's a 5K. That's all I'm ever going to do. That's all I, you know, am going to do. And it ended up a year later, I was found myself in Dallas, Texas, running where they um, shot the Sniper movie. Uh -huh. 16 plus miles and like 37 obstacles. And during that time, I kept saying, this is the obstacle where I felt like I was gonna fail. And I, I did it. This is where a point in my life, so and so. Every obstacle, I had something in there and I said, and this is where I'm gonna leave it. You know, it was that middle part that nobody ever sees. And at the end, I got my medal, I climbed the rope, I did all this, I said, and now I don't have to worry about any of that. And I feel like the middle part is where that's missing. You know, with college students, they see the long applications and you have to register for this and you have to do that. And then they see somebody who was really successful in college. How did they get there? You don't see that middle part at all, ever, you know? So I feel like it's very important to, like you said, trust the process in anything that you do. Um, how, did, how did you get to this point? You know, like, why are you here at Rock Valley College? Well, somebody must have said, hey, I think that you should do this, or it was on your brain. You know, find your middle part. Like, enjoy those 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 moments that make who you are right now. Um, so. Oh, I love that. I, it reminds me of uh, one time I heard somebody was speaking, and it was about in regards to the life of somebody who passed away. And it was like, don't focus on the 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 birth and the the actual end of his or her life. Set, focus on the dash, right? It's the, the middle part, that component, uh, that experience, those relationships, that's, that's where the focus should be on. And it just came back to my <laughs> remembrance because of what you said. Um, students go through so many obstacles, but they develop so many relationships, and they discover who they are by simply coming onto a college experience, coming to a college campus and being willing to experience that, right? And uh, if you think about it from a human's perspective, if you get a job, mm -hmm. if you stick with it, or you get the right mentor, stick by them. Mm -hmm. There's so much within those relationships that will help you build character. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, one thing I always say, you know, whether I had a good supervisor or a bad supervisor, <laughs> I can always learn something from them. Mm -hmm. Either learn what I want to do when I get to that point or what I'm not going to do when I get to that point. But I'm going to learn something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so talk to me about uh, you have, you'd say four? Mm -hmm. four? Four young ones, right? Uh, not necessarily young, but yes. Teenager or younger? Older. Okay, you got four children. Mm -hmm. How do you coach them regarding their success? My 24 year old <laughs> um, is very successful at his job. Um, he is very driven. Um, and I like to think he gets that from me. He um, always has a goal in mind. And, and when he has a rough patch, he's like, Mom. What do you think? And I said, I think that you really need to step back and evaluate your situation, you know? And I said, it's teaching you something. You know, why, why aren't they giving me this? And I said, it's teaching you something. You want it that bad? Maybe patience is what it's teaching you, you know? <laughs> um, my my t almost 22 year old is still figuring out life. Um, so I'm that, I'm the vent for her, <laughs> you know? Um, but my 10 year old and my eight year old they are becoming their own person right now. Um, my daughter gave me a Mother's Day. She made me a booklet and it said, what is the best thing that your mom does? And she says, I watch my mom coach at her gym. <laughs> and I was like, oh, she, they, they're watching, you know? And the other part was, how does you know that your mom loves you? And she goes, because she tells me. 
<laughs> I do. I tell her all the time. Um, my youngest, she says, you know, how do? You, what's the number one reason why you love your mom? Because she bought a Jeep. They love my Jeep <laughs> Wrangler. You know, so it's those little things. Um, you know, we've we've had situations that uh, that arise, and they come to me because they know that mom's a either going to comfort them, b give it to them straight, um, or c just be like, sit down, let's reprocess this, take a deep breath, and let's move on. You know, I'm not one to hold on to things the whole entire time. It's like, okay, what are we learning from this, and let's move on. It's either going to make us or break us. You know, I, I always tell my daughter, we won't fail unless we don't try. You know, and she remembers that. So in the morning when she gets up and we and I let them off from school, I'm like, be nice, be kind, and that's all I ask for you. You know, so I think that they, you know, like you said, you have a good mentor, you have somebody good in your life, a good resource, a team, that's gonna help you be successful in life. You know, you, you, can't, you can't do everything alone, um, is what, uh, what I'm learning still to this day. Um, so that's my perspective of that. I appreciate that, I appreciate that perspective. So now I am going to take it a different way. I'm gonna go back to Perk, all right? Persistence is really, when we talk about persistence, we're talking about semester over a semester, right? Beginning of semester to the beginning of the next semester. Enrollment is from recruiting to getting the student enrolled on campus. <clears throat> um, retention, we really look at a year. So student being successful from you know, day one on campus or within the first week on campus and still on campus or enrolled in classes sure. uh, two semesters later, like a year later, right? So fall to fall or spring to spring. And then there's completion. And completion is truly uh, whether or not they're completing the uh, certificate or completing uh, their degree mm -hmm. with us. Uh, and there's, you know, there's different variations of this, of course, but these are our four right now that we consider at Rock Valley College. Mm -hmm. If you had to select one as the top priority, persistence, enrollment, retention, and completion, which one do you think is your top priority? The top priority for me would probably be I think I would be torn between persistence and completion. My persistence of just, you know, you're gonna keep coming here, keep doing what you have to do, but what if things shift, you know? Um, we might wake up one day feeling like, oh, this is what I'm gonna do, and then something happens, and you're like, okay, maybe that's not what I'm supposed to do. But you're still coming back, you're, you know, you're still taking classes, may not be what you're initially, you know, thought what you were gonna do, but the end goal would probably would be completion. But I think if things change, you don't give up. Don't just say, "Okay, I'm not going to go anymore because that's not what I'm going to do." Um, to trust the process and be persistent and be like, "Hey, okay, well, this didn't work out, but I'm going to try this part. This didn't work out. Now I'm going to try this part." You know. Um, and at some point, like I said, you got to talk to somebody. If it's just you feel like you're going on a hamster wheel, you, <laughs> you need to go to the counselors, talk to a teacher, you know, like, hey, I'm really struggling here right now. Um, but I think I would, I would venture to say persistent or completion is what I would <laughs> think, yeah. All right, thank you. And just so you know, there's no perfect answer, you know, because when you're dealing with a student, let's liken it back to your gym. Mm -hmm. For some, uh, you might meet someone, right, and you really have to encourage them to enroll. You just come to the gym. Mm -hmm. Just do a workout with me. Mm -hmm. Do something. You you really have to convince them to take a step forward. And you sometimes that's going as far as literally holding their hand. Like, yeah. come on, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's if you get them there, or when you get them there, then then you you you're trying to build up their confidence, let them experience some sense of success or achievement. Right, so that uh, maybe they're still there six weeks into it, 
you know, hey, you started in week one, but you know what, six weeks from now, we can all look at this and talk about your success. What were your achievements? But then that by, by that time, or for us, by the end of the semester, a 16 week semester, it's like, look what you've been able to accomplish, all right? And for you, it's, okay, are you going to extend the membership? For us, it's, are you gonna take additional classes? Are you gonna stay focused and finish up? Uh, have you decided on a certificate? Have you decided on the degree, right? And when you help students get that sense of purpose, then they wanna stay longer. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden you have retention. Yeah. And then this is where I call an advising, an uh, 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 old advising colleague of mine would call the big A and the little A. Mm -hmm. The big A is in the, in, a, in the advising relationship is that the, uh, is the person who is really dictating the entire relationship. You can do this, you can do that, you're doing that. And at the beginning, it starts with the advisor or the trainer or the coach. The little A is the student working through and listening and saying whether or not I'm gonna, figuring out whether or not he or she's gonna trust you or not. Mm -hmm. But a year into this, right, into this, all of a sudden, the student takes on the big A role, right, and the advisor or the trainer takes on a small A role. And what I mean is, all of a sudden, they're coming in to meet with you and they're saying, I want to go down this path. This is what I want to do, right? Or I want, to, I want some more training here. Or I want to train for this marathon. Or I want to train for uh, this uh, Spartan race and things of that nature, right? And next thing you know, a year later, two years later, three years later, the trainer or the advisor, or the faculty member, or whoever it is that's been that mentor and, and motivator for that person, can have a sense of accomplishment as well. Like, wow, look what he or she has been able to do, you know? And that's, so when I hear some of your experiences, I relate it, I have, it's who I am, I relate <laughs> it back to education all yes. the time. <laughs> uh, but. Uh, does that make sense? Oh, does absolutely. that does that relate with absolutely. you? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. I still get that feeling with people, you know, that wow, I got I got to be a part of that journey, you know, and and I think it's very important to always have that solid person, you know, that you refer back to, um, especially when it comes to education, you know, because perception and you know goals they change all the time, you know, and and I think that when you don't have that solid structure, you're gonna have, you're gonna have times where you're gonna be like, oh, I don't know what to do. But when people see something in you and they are pushing and, and going for you and motivating you, I really feel like that, that can help in the long run and in the short run, you know, so. So, Trustee Salto, mm -hmm. <laughs> are you used to that yet? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, why did you share with us a time where you, you've been in that motivator role and you've experienced somebody else achieving success? Sure. Like, is there a moment that you're just proud of that it just helps you even when you're like, maybe you question something about yourself and you remember like how you helped somebody else? What is, can you share an experience like that? Sure. I, um in my business, I hold what they call a pound down challenge. And particularly, I had two people come to me. Um, and one of them was, and I, I, I don't like to say he was obese, but clinically he was, correct? Because um, when you look at people, they're like, you know, well, oh, he doesn't look obese. Clinically, he was. And there was a woman who comes in um, very shy and timid. And there was about 32 people in my pound down challenge. And watching them every day struggle, sometimes cry, sometimes not make it. Um, and I would be like, hey, you know, you have to remember your why. Why did you come to me? Why did you learn about PCF? Why did you, why are we here into where we're at? Okay, I got you. And they come in and they'd come in. And out of 32 people, my winners were those two. 
during the COVID time because I still had them busting butt during when the gym wasn't even open. I had them texting me, screenshotting their maps of bike riding, walking, anything that they did. I needed them to be accountable for why they were there in the first place. And by the end of the time, when those two walked in the door, they were a half a person. And I looked at them and I was like, what? And their gratitude, their gratitude for what I felt was like, I didn't, I didn't need it, but they were like, you help me see the end result of why I kept going. You motivated me, you told me that you know I could do this, um, and I always told them, and I joke with them to this day about it, I said, if you're looking for a chicken and broccoli gym, it ain't mine. <laughs> you know, I said, because I believe that we've been told for so long that if you don't finish your plate or you don't eat your vegetables, that you won't be successful. I said, that's not true. You should be able to enjoy life, go out with your family to a restaurant if you like, you know, your per beverages, however you like them. I said, but it's the point of not overindulging. And it was teaching them that because nobody ever said, hey, you've had too many pieces of pizza today or don't eat, don't eat those chips. Well, have a couple of them. Who told you that you can't, you know? It was teaching them that process, the thinking process that they've been learned for so long that it was the change of the mindset. And when they walked into that gym, Dr. Spamer, let me tell you, they were even shocked with themselves. And to be a part of that journey, and to this day, they still say, that's her right there. She's the one that helped me get, get, get to this place. And he says to me, one of the gentlemen says, nobody ever asked if I was okay when I was fat. He goes, they asked me if I'm okay now because I look healthy. I said, isn't that the problem? Isn't that the problem? He goes, but you've helped me see that the, my journey now doesn't compare. He goes, I don't remember being that big anymore. I don't remember you know, having your, and he still to this day comes and is always thankful. He's always pouring into me, you know, spiritually, you know, just telling me that, you know, you got to keep going too. So now sometimes when I walk in that gym and I'm like, I'm not feeling it today. He's like, he's like, coach, this is, look at me, look at me when you, when you're feeling that way, he goes, you help me so much. And then brings me back to reality. I'm like, okay, I get it. I get it. So that's, they're two of my success stories. My response to that is, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so I appreciate you sharing that. Thank you. Um, and I'm not even going to uh, try to uh, truly expound on it other than to say, there you have it, another episode regarding Perk Up uh, with the president where I truly enjoyed our conversation, uh, a conversation I had with trustee uh, Crystal Soltau. We didn't really get into it as much, but if you really listen to the episode, you're going to recognize the importance of engaging people. It's important to engage people, know where they're at, help to motivate them, know what gets them started, what, what helps them to uh, get to a point where they're willing to succeed. But if you're there for them in that coaching role, in that advising role, in that faculty role, in that training role, whatever that role may be, it's amazing how if they're willing to stick to it and have some form of self-motivation but have the right resources there with them, that they're more likely to be successful. And not just successful, but they'll get to the point well, the roles reverse. And maybe on your down moment, the person that you help once will be there to help you. With that, this is Perk Up with the President. Thank you for listening.